for a long time had an extreme fear of the dark and couldn't, growing up at Pierce's Inn, sort of it's creaking, things, you felt like a lot was with you. you. You never felt alone at Pierce's Inn. You didn't want to be alone at Pierce's Inn because <laughs> someone else was there and you couldn't quite get your finger on it. So I like grew up pretty freaked out. So my, my second senior year yeah. at UNH, <laughs> I was at the library really late one night, and I left the library to go down to get my car in town. And I leave the library, and I'm already ready for panic, right? So I've got, I start my hustle, and I get my snark going, just, and I'm heading down the street, and I'm pretty nervous. And the, what had been going on on campus is three sexual assaults had occurred, and they hadn't caught the suspect, which adds to the fear. And they said he had an orange car, so I'm looking for orange cars. I'm in a panic. So catastrophic thoughts, uh, thoughts are cranking up as I'm heading down the, down the street. And to my good fortune, right when I get to town, there is a police officer and a campus police officer talking with each other. And I am so relieved. I hustle right up. I'm like, fellas, so good to see you. I have a couple questions. I've been really nervous about these sexual assaults. I really just need some advice because you're not giving us a lot of information. I know you can't. You're doing that. But, but you got to tell me this. Give me one thing of advice. My friends, we're all nervous. We're running. And I don't run at night. I run during the day. But w during the day, well, how can we keep ourselves safe? And the Town, the town police officer said, well, don't run in lycra tights. <laughs> hmm. And the other guy said, yeah, good idea. I am seething with, I am like, oh, ho, ho, ho. he's telling me that my lycra tights are the cause of that? Oh, ho, ho, ho. blame the victim here, okay. So I say, fellas, do you know why I wear lycra tights? I reach and I grab my inner thighs, both of them, and I say, because the fat on my inner thighs rubs together and chafes. Now they look a little scared. And they might call for backup. They're, they're very nervous to be on the street with me alone. And I say, they chafe so much that they bleed. I'm almost crying. And I just can't take it. I step between them and I keep walking. I am no longer afraid. I am so filled with rage that if anyone came near me, I, would, I don't know what I would do. So I get in my car and I begin to cry. And I drive four miles to my house and I am bawling. But I pull myself together as I pull in the driveway. And my roommate didn't leave the outside light on. So I'm like, Whew, back to a little fear. So I get out of the car, get my heavy backpack from the whole day, and I step in the house, and I'm feeling along the wall for the light. Now, my roommate, he must have heard the car come in the, in the driveway. He was jarred awake, thought he'd go to the bathroom. At the exact moment I flip on the light, he goes, boo. I am blinded. I take my whole backpack up over my head hit him over the head, two hands come in my face, I bite his finger. I'm raging, raging. And then I, my eyes come into focus and there is a little man in his boxers with his hair sticking up and his eyes wide and even sleep wrinkles on his face. And he says, what the hell is wrong with you? And I said, you don't know what I've been through. We went to sleep. The next morning, we got up and we processed. And he said, OK, OK, I get it. I get you got the big fear. You told me about it. Now I know. I won't be scaring you anymore. But I do think you would benefit from a little therapy, maybe just a touch. <laughs>